Hello everybody and welcome back to the new VR news. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today, we have the reveal of the new Sony PlayStation 2 VR controllers, Facebook is giving us some improved avatars, we got a new trailer and the release date for Swarm, and finally, once again, Microsoft squashes our Xbox VR dreams. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into this. I'm gonna get the easy stuff out of the way first, and recently it appeared that Italian Xbox users had stumbled onto a major Xbox VR leak. Unfortunately though, this was just a localization bug. The Xbox was stating that you needed to update your VR headset, but it should have been referencing the wireless headphones. Fellow YouTuber and Italian hacker Tyrell Wood has confirmed this. He set his Xbox into Italian and then plugged in the headphones, and lo and behold, there is the message that everyone was seeing. Microsoft has also come out with an official statement that VR is not their focus right now, and this was indeed a localization bug. Now, if you think that response is suspect and this error message is just way too specific, there is some leeway in the Italian translation, so VR headset doesn't mean exactly the same thing we would think of. Now, a fact that VR isn't a main focus to Microsoft is a sentiment they've had for quite some time. If you look at the company's history, they never jump in until there is an established market. This was the case for the Microsoft console, Zoom players, phones, tablets, etc. So give it a few more years, allow the VR industry to continue growing, and eventually we'll see some Microsoft VR exclusives. But just to reiterate this point, a highly successful AAA exclusive title usually sells around 20 million copies. The closest comparison in the VR realm is Half-Life Alex, and that only sold roughly 2 million copies across all PC VR headsets. Don't give up hope though guys, I'm fairly certain we will see an Xbox VR one day. Okay, so next up we got a little preview of some new avatars coming to Facebook Horizon. If you're not familiar with Horizon, it's basically Facebook's version of Rec Room. Horizon has been in closed beta for quite some time, and the first impressions haven't been great, but these avatars look like a huge step forward. I'll include a link to the video I'm currently showing, which briefly discusses some of the complexities in creating this style of avatar. Keep in mind, there was no facial tracking used for these avatars. While the avatars are still quite cartoony, the upgrade to the facial features is pretty amazing. Socialization has a huge impact on VR, so I'm looking forward to see these avatars get rolled out. Okay, so next up we have the release date and a new trailer for Swarm. Swarm is this amazing high action arcade shooter where you swing around like Spider-Man. It's coming to the Oculus Quest on April 8th and will be available on the Rift platform shortly after. The Steam version has unfortunately been delayed until the summer. It'll be worth the wait though because the game is an absolute blast to play. It features some fantastic shooting and swinging mechanics, and it's quite a challenge. Full disclosure, I am a community manager for Green Sky Games. They showed me this game a few months back. I was really impressed and glad to join their team. I'm not getting paid to make this video though, nor am I required to say anything specific. I just honestly think you guys will love this game. I have an in-depth, exclusive first look of this game coming soon to the channel, so make sure you subscribe so you won't miss it. Okay, so let's move on to the big news. The Sony PlayStation 2 VR controllers have been revealed, and at first glance, it is already a huge upgrade. They have a similar form factor and button layout that you'll find on many other VR controllers, but they're also including a lot of new features. The controllers have this unique orb-like shape that's used for both tracking and may also serve as some form of collision protection. I hope these controllers are robust because every VR user eventually punches something and it looks like that ring's gonna take the majority of the impact. Sony hasn't detailed their tracking system just yet, but the ring along the bottom of the controller is tracked, but based on the lack of visible lights, it's possible they're using IR emitters rather than the red and blue illumination that Sony traditionally uses. We'll have to wait for new specs or to see these in action to learn some more. Another nice design improvement is in term of the ergonomics. The classic PlayStation Move controllers feel like you're holding a pair of sticks. They're not ideal to replicate things like a gun handle, and they often leave your hands at weird angles. The angle of the new controllers is just so much more natural. Now where the controllers start to get really impressive is with the inclusion of some features from the PlayStation 5 DualSense controllers. If you haven't used the PlayStation 5 controllers yet, it's really hard to express how impressive they truly are. 
They have adaptive triggers that alter the feedback sensation based on what you are doing in-game. Pulling the trigger of a gun feels completely different than pulling back a bowstring when using these controllers. This will be taken to a whole new level in VR where you're constantly interacting with different objects. These new controllers are also promising a much wider range of haptic feedback. Gone are the days of simple vibrations. Sony is promising more impactful, textured, and nuanced feedback. Now there's no specifics on how exactly this would work, but based on my experience with the PlayStation 5 controllers, it's truly impressive how much edit immersion you can get from new controllers. Astrobot and Spider-Man Miles Morales really showcase the controllers, and I swear you can actually feel the tension when you are swinging around or pulling objects. It might sound like I'm overselling the haptics, but trust me, the level of immersion this could add would be game-changing. Sony is also adding finger tracking. If you've used the Valve Index controllers, you would know how impactful this can actually be. There's a huge increase in immersion, and gestures just become so much more natural. I'm not sure how Sony plans on handling a fully open hand, as I'm not seeing any straps like you find on the Valve Index controllers. I hope they'll be able to incorporate this feature, because once you get used to just opening your hand whenever you want with the Valve Index controllers, it's something you'll end up missing if you don't have it. Other than these new improvements, these controllers are looking a lot more like standard VR controllers in a good way. Maintaining a standard button layout is ideal for game compatibility. And while I do expect the PlayStation 2 will have a fair share of exclusive titles, there'll also be plenty of cross-platform titles, and anything that makes development easier is good for us consumers. Speaking of developers, prototypes for these controllers are going out soon, so I expect we'll get a lot more information in the near future. Speaking of the near future, I'm doing an insane 24-hour live stream on April 11th. There will be hourly giveaways, tons of VR guests, opportunities to join me in-game, and you could watch my sanity levels slowly deplete over time. So if you're interested in checking that out, remember to subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and as always, I will see you guys on next time.